Unfortunately, fire is not the solution to every problem, particularly not problems that are caused by fires, such as the house before me currently burning to the ground. No, fire is not the solution here. Despite the screaming crackles and pops and the enormous smoke pillar forming its own disgusting gray-brown-black clouds in the evening sky, my neighbors have decided that their party is more important than ensuring the safety of the living bodies not ten steps away. Instead, the gravelly voice of Billy Joe Armstrong creeps over the scene like a poorly timed movie soundtrack demanding that someone, anyone, kill the DJ. As the roof collapses and the embers fly up and outward, the threat to the neighbor's house very well could make good on Billy's request. I'd like to think Billy Joe Armstrong would pause his music to notice the spectacular fireworks happening next door, as the embers representing the family photo albums, the baby book, the childhood toys I can never quite part with float into the sky in tiny explosions. Without hesitation, Billy calls again for someone to kill the DJ. When your house burns down, your insurance should tally up everything you lost and cut you a check to replace it. Everything from the wine-stained couch to the locket with a photo of my ex that I told myself I would get rid of but could never find the way that seemed right. Toss it in the river? No. It could be eaten by fish, which could suffer issues and die and be eaten by another fish, by proximity, this second fish would also be eating the locket, and the cycle repeats until the population dwindles to nothing. Sure, that would describe the feeling of being deserted, but the environmental catastrophe of that doesn't seem worth the metaphor. Throw it in the trash? While a clear representation, it doesn't feel dramatic enough. Give it back to him? No, that suggests I still care. Carrying is a weakness. The last thing you want during a breakup is to show weakness, especially when he lives next door. Plus, the locket is pretty. Another board snaps and collapses as the fire nibbles away at it. Correction, the locket was pretty. The song is daring me. Shoot the goddamn DJ. Your insurance is supposed to work with you to create a list of every item you owned and lost in the fire. The air fryer, the dog beds, the $40 fabric scissors. Of course, insurance being what it is, we'll look for the lowest cost you could possibly replace each item with. $10 fabric scissors. Of course, the check can only be cut for items that you know were there or that they can find evidence for. $2 safety scissors passing as fabric scissors. Fucking kill the DJ. Of course having insurance on a house is required for the payout. I was going to go to the insurance office to add it to the plan. Tomorrow, after work, or next week during a lunch break, on my way between the office and a client, or in a few weeks when I was going to use a vacation day to take care of several errands that I can't get to during the day. He took the house off his plan when he moved in next door. A few minutes too late, I question if the paperwork I meant to take in might still be sitting on what's left of the dining room table, or if they've already jumped into the air like acrobats and dissolved into the dark scraps of air. If the marriage certificate might be dancing right along with it. Not that it meant anything anymore. Is it ironic for a pond-side home to be burning to the ground? I can't see the other side, but I imagine fallen ashes are coating the little pond like a blanket. Shielding the non-native fish population from the horrors their homes would never know. Shoot that motherfucker. This was never meant to be my soundtrack. But if it must be, Billy, I'll oblige. Suddenly, I'm running toward the shiny white door, the only thing left between me and him. Shoot the DJ. Without missing a drumbeat, I throw the door open. His back is toward me, staring intently at his laptop the one I gave him for his birthday two months ago, the one he took when he moved out three days later. Please, the song begs, murder the DJ. Louder now, the music hurts my ears while masking my footsteps. The fireplace set, gifted by my in-laws three years ago, set unused in my path. I grab the poker, the pointed end blunt, but usable. His hair is swooped in the way I always used to like. From here, I can almost smell the gel we started buying him when the one he used in high school was discontinued. A faint whiff of smoke taints the air. A dark wine stain discolors the back of the couch. The couch is part of a matching set. He took one, I took the other. 
a gift from my parents. The smoke must be messing with my head. The wine stain is spreading downward. He doesn't move as I get closer, as I step slowly into his peripheral in front of him. The album of our wedding photos is spread along the coffee table, pages scattered across the couch, the floor, his lap. At his feet, a gasoline canister. It moves freely with a tap from my foot. It's empty. He doesn't move. The gun slips from his limp hand and falls to the floor. He doesn't move. The poker in my hand falls. The floor collapses beneath me. The hands covering my mouth reduce my capacity to scream. The hands aren't mine. Mine fly forward as the rest of me is pulled back. I bite to the last chord of the song, just in time for his girlfriend's scream to be audible, just in time to hear the final collapse of the house next door, just in time to notice the flashing blue and red lights arriving too late, just in time to realize that the only man I have ever loved is dead, just in time to truly land on the ground.